What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going over my favorite, that's right, my favorite bike, Black Mamba, the 700 horsepower, 220 mile per hour street bike. Yes, you heard me right, 220 miles per hour in the quarter mile on eh, what looks to be like a normal street bike. We're going to go in depth today, look at it, check it out, see it without the body work. You're going to find out what goes into a bill like this. And I've also got some exciting new news to bring to you at the end of the video to show you about a new project we got. All right, guys, stay with us. Here we go. All right, guys, so the first thing you got to be wondering is how is it possible for this bike to make 700 horsepower? And how does this one make 700 horsepower? And the last bike in the video that we did, the real street bike, make only 400 horsepower. There's a big difference between 400 and 700, and it can't be all just because of the turbo versus nitrous. Well, part of that is correct, but there's also things that help go into this bike that the real street doesn't have that this bike does have one of those things mainly being the clutch system the clutch system is one of the things that allows us to be able to throw more power more boost more everything into this bike um, and this bike is also much longer which will allow it to take much more horsepower the fuel is different in this bike uh, it runs on alcohol instead of gasoline, where the other one runs on race gas. This one runs on straight alcohol. Straight alcohol gives us the ability to keep the bike much cooler and make much more power. So now we're going to pull the bodywork off the bike, show you a little bit about what it looks like without the bodywork, what goes into the wiring harness, what goes into some of the controls, show you the radiator system on the bike, show you... Uh, Basically, there's a whole lot behind these fairings. Stay with us. All right, so as you can see, we got all the body work off. And as you can tell right away, there's a whole lot of stuff going on on this bike with the body work off. You see this right here? That's the gas tank. This is where we put gas in it at. And uh, it holds almost one gallon behind that, behind the factory headlight. Uh, this contraption right here, that's the batteries. There's two batteries on this bike. And those are two full spectrum Pulse P.1s. The bike starts on a 24 volt starting system. So that means both batteries are linked together. And when you push the button, it uh, spins the engine over very fast. This right here is the boost control solenoids. It's a battery tender <laughs> to charge the batteries. The bike has two batteries, so each one of these, we have two separate chargers for them. Um, we just keep those tucked in right there. And need to charge the battery, just plug it up right quick. Um, as you can see, we got our voltage rectifier mounted up under there. That's what charges the battery as it goes down the track or regulates the voltage going into the battery. You can see here that GPS 08, it's GPS for the dash. This tells the dash uh, our GPS speed, our time, our ETs. We know everything uh, basically about the whole run based off what that GPS says. So this piece right here, that's called an outer bearing support. This hooks around the frame and around a special nut on the front sprocket. And that links those two together. That way the, I guess you would say the rear wheel doesn't rip the shaft out of the engine. Um, whenever the thing is putting down so much power 
it'll actually snap the input shaft or the output shaft off in the transmission. This thing here, that's our turbo wastegate that helps control the boost, keeps it regulated. This is our turbo plenum for those who don't know about turbos. This is basically uh, all the air sucks in here, goes up through the piping here, and into the engine there. And from there we have eight fuel injectors controlling this bike. So it's a four cylinder motorcycle with eight fuel injectors. These are 1700 cc injectors on the top, 240 cc injectors on the bottom. So basically it just idles on the lower injectors and then the upper injectors pretty much do all the work the rest of the time. Now you see the nitrous bottle on here. The nitrous basically all it does is help control the boost pressure. Or the solenoids for the boost controller. So we have a three pound wastegate spring and which means we can run a minimum of three pounds of boost well, on a traditional boost controller setup with a three pound wastegate spring you could only run five or six pounds of boost well when we turn that air bottle on that gives us the ability to close the wastegate and we can hold it closed however long we want to well whenever the wastegate opens it bleeds boost off and you know regulates it so that system allows us to be able to run very precise boost control. Now here you will see this little gizmo. And I'll turn the ignition on so you can see what's going on here. But this is our laser, AKA wheelie control. So what this does is this regulates um, or monitors how high the front wheel is off the ground. Now, right now, it's getting a crazy reading on there because it's in that front wheel stand. But you can see as I move my finger, it's changing the reading of that, what that laser's, you know, calculating. Um, so once that sees a certain height, then we have it set up to where it pulls power, pulls timing, pulls boost, etc. There's lots of different things we can do with it. Uh, we also have traction control on the bike. So if the bike sees a certain wheel spin, it'll pull timing, pull boost, etc. Um, and it's all done and controlled through this Max ECU race system. This Max ECU gives us the ability to have Bluetooth control as well. Um, BJ can actually change the tune from his cell phone on the starting line, which is a pretty cool feature. If we were to get up there and the track is not in good condition, people are spinning and stuff like that, he can actually connect to the bike through his cell phone and turn the power down or change the tune. We also have multiple preset tunes in this switch right here. As I flip this switch, you see it goes to different maps and those different maps are predetermined, you know, before we go to the starting line of how much boost we want to run, how much timing we want to run, and so on throughout the run. Now you see in here, you see the energy ignition coils. We run those on every single bike. And I've had a few people ask about those PMs and stuff, wanting to know, can they put those on their bike? Well, those things are about 700 bucks and really they're not going to help a stock bike that much. Um, that's something that you need forced induction. You need nitrous oxide. You need something that would require a stronger ignition system. Now we're dumping tons of fuel in this thing, especially with the alcohol. It burns about a gallon of alcohol per pass. Um, so it sucks pretty much that whole fuel tank almost dry after every run uh, one more thing i wanted to show you guys you see here uh, this gauge on the swing arm a lot of you may be wondering what that is well that is for our penske 
air shock. Now you'll see here, uh, we've just got it randomly pumped up. I'm not gonna tell you how much pressure we run, but right now we've got it set on about 375 pounds. And you can kind of see the ride height of the bike. Well, we can adjust that. And boom, just like that, I lowered the bike down. Be low now. All from just changing that air pressure in the shock. Um, the Penske air shock really is the most advanced shock on the market right now. Um, we run them on pretty much every bill we're doing at this point. We also have that pressure sensor right there that's hooked to the air shock that goes back and tells us the pressure on our dash and it also tells us the pressure in our logs throughout the run. Now one more sensor you may see back here on the back, that little red sensor, that's a tire temperature sensor. So that sensor there tells me the temperature of my tire. I've got a little special light on the dash as I'm doing the burnout. Whenever that tire reaches optimum temperature, that light will actually light up and turn green, telling me that the tire is ready. And then once we pull up to the starting line, it'll change colors again once the tire has cooled back off to the optimum temperature to go down the racetrack. And we change that from time to time based on the actual track temperature. Uh, this carbon fiber, this is our fuse box here. And then that's a solid state relay that controls the air clutch uh, as well as one other thing on the bike. So all in all, from all the questions that I've gathered, uh, from all the comments that you guys have commented in the other videos that we've done, a lot of people is how much does it cost? How much does it cost? How much does it cost? Well, a bike like this is crazy expensive. So just throwing some quick numbers out there, a pro street motor that's gonna hold up to 700 horsepower by the time you buy parts and labor and your cylinder head and your crankshaft and your pistons and your rods and everything that goes involved with that is about 15 to $20,000 for a motor. To be able to race pro street, you'll look over there and you see two more motors pretty much ready to go. So if we were to have a mishap and tear one up at the race, well, we're not gonna just drive 800 miles back home and quit. We're gonna go to work and put a new motor in this thing and two hours or hour and a half later, we're ready to go racing again. The next thing, the turbo kit. A turbo kit for this bike is gonna run you, by the time you get the boost controller or whatever you need to you know, all the operating system you need, close to $10,000. By the time you buy the turbo, the plenum, you know, the piping, the headers, you know, the solenoids, all the stuff that goes involved with that, you got a lot of money in a turbo system. The next thing is mounting all these things. So you have to mount everything as far forward as possible. And if you're not a fabricator, you got to pay somebody. So that gets super expensive. You know, you'll have a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars in mounting all these things in the front making all these components uh, the next thing your suspension you know you have uh, air shock is eighteen hundred dollars um, if you run just any other normal triple adjustable Penske you know you're thirteen or fourteen hundred dollars a swing arm you're fourteen or fifteen hundred dollars a set of wheels you're twenty five hundred dollars uh, body work, you know, you're anywhere from $2,000 to $7,000 for a set of carbon fiber body work. Uh, the ECU, you, you can range anywhere from uh, $5,000 to $10,000 in an ECU and sensors and options and gizmos and gadgets. You know, all that stuff gets very expensive. Uh, foot pegs, you know, everything really racks up. That subframe there about six hundred dollars uh, just the brake levers or the clutch lever and clutch master cylinder system we run uh, we run is about eight hundred dollars for just a clutch 
master cylinder. Um, and that clutch master cylinder helps us cut better reaction times. They, uh, the braking system, those Behringer brakes, those are about seven or eight hundred dollars. These special rotors that we have are about four hundred dollars a piece. Uh, the chain that we go have is about two hundred and fifty dollars, and we have to put one on about every two passes. The tire, the tire lasts about two trips to the track. That's two hundred and fifty dollars. The clutches, so this particular bike, uh, the way we set up and run the clutch, you know, burns about 20 thousandths uh, worth of material off the clutch every single pass. So we have to go through the clutch system. The, uh, within that clutch system, you know, we have to do plates and those plates are about $150 and we go through about one set per weekend. Uh, fuel, fuel is about 50 bucks and we burn in a full race week about five gallons in one full three-day race trip. It's a very expensive class, very fun class, but it's 700 horsepower, 220 miles per hour does not come easy. All right, guys, so in the beginning of the video, I told you we had a big surprise. Well, here it is. This is going to be the new Pro Street bill for 2020. Yes, that's right. Next year, Big Country, my brother, Alex Moore, will be partnering with Joe at Red Bull Racing, and we're going to be building a brand new 2020 Hayabusa. So follow along as we go through this build together. We're going to be posting and documenting every piece on it uh, as we get this thing from a, basically from being a bare frame to being on a complete, uh, this thing will probably make 800 horsepower, complete 220 mile per hour monster like Black Mamba. And you see how it's starting out. So we're going to be doing everything in house. You'll be able to see everything get built the swing arm go on, the, the motor go in, every piece of it will be done right here. And you guys are going to go along for the whole entire ride. Also, another thing, do you guys like what you see in these car builds? We also do a little bit with hot rod cars here at More Mafia. This is a Corvette ZR1. This is owned by More Mafia tuner BJ over there. That's his. Anyways, it's a project he's putting couple little lobs ends on headers and exhaust and stuff uh, right now that he's in the process of doing and then we also have other cool projects uh, I'll show you this one see what you think about this this belongs to my wife Mrs. Moore Mafia this is her 53 Chevy 3100 uh, it's a, got a, a LS V8 5.3 big cam really cool ride just let me know if you guys like this stuff if you want to see more we'll start incorporating some of the cars into the video if you don't like it no big deal we'll stick to the bikes just let me know what you think in the comments below and we'll give you guys everything you want to see on the channel have a good thanksgiving have a good one guys see ya